Welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. We all know that B-17 has gone down as one of the most formidable and most famous aircraft in World War II history. Even today, 80 years after it was into service, it is still loved by many history enthusiasts. But here are a few facts that even most seasoned history buffs don't know about. Very few vulnerabilities existed. Nearly all the angles were fiercely guarded, notably the 6 o'clock where the majority of the aviation strikes would originate. As a result, a new plan of action was developed by the Germans. Many German pilots immediately realized that attacking the bomber formation head-on was one of the best but also the most challenging way to do it. The bombers were just in front, they were closing in quickly. This implied that your target would start to move quicker and faster in your gun's sight as you got closer. This was not necessarily an issue though if you were targeting a huge formation of bombers because they were big targets and huddled together. However, this provided a far more challenging issue if you were attempting to fire a single machine gun at a fast moving target. Additionally, a B-17 did have a machine gun in the nose of the aircraft but when under a head-on assault. German pilots often only had to worry about one or two firing locations. This was due to the fact that only two of the B-17's several gunner locations could really fire while under a head-on assault. Due to this, it was slightly tightly guarded than the majority of the other attack directions. But most significantly, while attacking the B-17, the German pilots faced a difficult challenge since the B-17 was so tough and capable of withstanding a lot of fire. Yet, it was not as difficult to kill the B-17 pilots or destroy the cockpit even when the remainder of the aircraft was mostly unharmed. A well-placed round of fire to the front of the formidable B-17 would frequently bring it down. Although it was a challenging shot to get off, it was safer and more sheer tactical choice than a typical attack from behind. Due to this, the head-on attack was one of the B-17's very few points of weakness when being attacked by skilled German fighters. Germans are infamous for being on the side of the covert weaponry and experimental aircraft in history. However, the Allied also had some unique plans of their own. Operation Aphrodite was a strategy to use over Europe and they tried to mimic the Japanese kamikaze strike by packing a B-17 to the gills with heavy explosives and crashing it directly into the valuable enemy objectives. But unlike the Japanese, the Americans were unwilling to give up one of their own to accomplish this. They decided to try remote control operations of these planes instead. The strategy entails taking a B-17 that has seen combat. As it was getting closer to the end of its useful life, all the seats, weaponry, armor and the other components were removed. The bomber would then be filled with as many explosives as it could fit inside, which was frequently more than twice the payload. Then they would take off and fly towards the destination. There was a total of 14 of these odd missions launched, but none of them managed to completely neutralize their target, and the tactic was mostly ineffective. The bomber-laden aircraft was proven to be challenging to operate remotely, and the program was ultimately abandoned in January 1945. The Flying Fortress durability which was one of its best known qualities. The B-17 was adored by American air crew for its amazing resilience under extreme stress and ability to return home. One specific B-17 made it through the bombing mission despite suffering severe damage and returned home with just two of the four engines intact. After landing, ground staff determined that the aircraft had around 180 flak holes in it. When compared to the other bombers like the B-24s, this was one of the main reasons it was favored by the airmen. The most popular Luftwaffe aircraft at the period, the German Bf-109 fighter, was renowned for its lethal 20mm gun that caused havoc on Allied aircraft. Any Mustang or Spitfire it came across was frequently destroyed with only a fast burst in the proper place. However, while engaging the B-17, German pilots discovered that it took around 20 shots from 20mm to bring down a flying fortress. 
Assuming a 2% accuracy rate, it would take 5 BF109 to take down 1 B17, as 1 BF109 carried around 200 rounds of cannon ammo. If you like this video, consider subscribing to Down the Rabbit Hole. Keep watching for more such videos.